Yeah, th thanks very much, and uh, thanks all for coming. I um, hope everyone's not too sleepy after lunch, but welcome nonetheless to uh, my talk about uh, data quality testing with uh, Airflow and Soda. Um, quick thing, just a bit, a bit about me. So yeah, my name's Nathan Hadfield. I'm a principal data engineer at King. Hands up if you've heard of us. Ah, that's pretty good. For those of you who haven't, don't worry, I'll explain. Um, I've been at King now for about, maybe about 11 years. Um, Prior to that, I spent a couple of years kind of working at uh, EA as well. So a good 12, 13 years now working in the video games industry in the casual uh, free-to-play space. Um, I say about 13 years. I did take five months off last year to go sailing around the world. So if you're bored about talking about airflow by the end of today, and you want to talk, talk about sailing the oceans, come and talk to me. and I'll talk about that all night. Anyway, um, so yeah, King. Uh, who's King? Well, if you don't know... Us as a company, then you probably know what we make, and that's the game uh, Candy Crush Saga, our most famous game. Um, a few things just about uh, King generally. We were founded in 2003, which the observant of you <laughs> will know that we're now celebrating our 20th uh, anniversary. Um, we launched Candy Crush onto the app stores back in uh, November 2012. Candy Crush these days now has been downloaded over 3 billion, 3 billion times. Still to this day has over 200 million monthly active users and has over 14,000 levels at this point in time. And believe it or not, there are plenty of people who have played up to, <laughs> up to that last level. Um, and a quite amazing fact is that Candy Crush franchise has been the top, uh, top grossing franchise in the US app stores for now like the 23rd quarter in a row. So it's a, quite a remarkable uh, success story. Um, uh, in 2016, we, were, we got acquired by um, Activision, and if you've been following news recently, you might have heard about this uh, acquisition of Activision by Microsoft, which we really hope all happens soon, regulators and that sort of stuff. Anyway, uh, so yes, uh, quick thing just about data at King generally. Um, I think we, we would put ourselves truly in the kind of like big data category, not your you know, Google or Facebook size, but you know, pretty, uh, pretty big, you know, multi-petabyte scale, individual tables in the you know, hundreds of terabytes, trillions of rows, and, and we add to that by about 100 billion uh, events every day. Um, we run all this in kind of Google Cloud and primarily BigQuery, um, and of course, Airflow, uh, backed by uh, Astronomer. Um, so just a bit about kind of how we use all this data. Um, well, so we collect data from our games you know, um, to aid in a, a variety of ways. The most obvious one is KPI, so you know, analyzing kind of what's happened before. Um, but we also do lots of uh, A-B testing, so using the data to you know, determine some you know, scientific analysis based upon these dozens, hundreds of tests that we run in our games at any one, any one time. Um, and we'll you know, also use this data for kind of optimization of the games, features you know, for you know, different, different aspects, monetization, engagement, that sort of thing. Um, and we might also use it for troubleshooting. I mean, this is not an exclusive list. There's other things as well, but these are some of the most common areas. Um, but why does, it, why does all this matter? Why does all this data matter? Well, because of the things that we, we do and the tests that we run, the decisions that get made based upon that can have like, you know, quite significant impacts, impacts to uh, revenue and how many people play our games and, re and retention. So, you know, it's important that the, the pipelines, data pipelines that we produce are dependable and produced, in quotes, you know, good output. Um, we want to keep the downtime of any data um, to a minimum. We want people to be able to access the most precious, the newest data as soon as they possibly can and not give them um, bad data. Um, and how we kind of measure how well we're doing at that is based upon um, data SLAs that we, as we assign to ourselves. So... Uh, we would a contract with uh, our consumers to say that this data product will be available um, by this time, and, and we measure ourselves against that. And you know, part of the solution to all of this is data quality, quality testing. It's not, it's not the everything, but it, 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 it contributes to this. Um, so, I, I mean, this is not like rocket science. I'm sure many of you are doing um, data quality testing already, but what do we... What do we mean, really? Well, we're kind of talking about the process of like detecting and surfacing data quality issues within within data pipelines, and these particularly uh, sorry typically take the form of like running predefined uh, tests, typically post ingestion or post post transformation, and these types of tests are good for uh, for certain types of tasks. You know, when you want to test 
particularly specific and maybe well-defined uh, problems. Um, they're good at you know, stopping bad data, in quotes again, kind of propagating downstream and re reaching um, data users. Um, these checks can help you know, f facilitate um, investigations into what's caused these problems. And if you uh, record these tests, then you can track over time um, the health of your data sets. Um, so, I mean, what are sort of types of tests you might run? Here's a, here's a few examples. Well, you know, volume. Did we actually load, create something? We've got, we've run a task, we've put some data on a table. Did we actually do that? How do we know? Um, you know, freshness, how up, up to date is this data? Um, uniqueness, are there, are there duplicates in there? Um, validity, do the values in columns conform to uh, expected patterns? Uh, reference data, you know, are there values in columns that we don't expect to see? Um, and distribution as well, perhaps how much has this data ever changed? There's others as well, but this is some of the most common ones we might want to do. Uh, so uh, what's out there at, at, at the moment? Well, kind of great expectations is the most established uh, open source tool, tool of a large community and lots of predefined checks. Uh, I did notice on the schedule, there's another talk in about two or three time from, um, I think it's PepsiCo, who are doing one on great expectations. I don't know if he's in the room at the moment. No. So <laughs> that's good, because my next, uh, my, my, this is personal opinion. <laughs> I found it, to, uh, found it to have quite obtuse terminology in an overblowing configuration. This is my opinion, so don't, don't hate me on that. Um, I'm glad he's not here. Um, um, if you're a DBT user, then you kind of get testing kind of almost out of the box, really, which is great because, you know, you don't need anything extra. For us, we're not DBT user customer, so it's not really that much an option for us. Um, and, of course, you can just write SQL queries to, you know, perform checks and you don't, really, you don't really need anything extra. But it's not really standardized all that well. And, you know, if you're writing a SQL query for every single check, then you're probably going to need lots of extra tasks in your DAX to perform all these checks. So, and this is, this is kind of what we've been doing for a while, or had been doing for a while anyway. Um, so, uh, Soda. So, Soda's a uh, relatively new player in this market, and it's a platform for data quality testing. Uh, there's various components to it. First one is Soda Core, which is like the open source Python library and CLI tool. Um, uh, Soda Cloud, which is like a data observability web application. Um, and they were just to visualize test results and you know, historical measurements. Um, so the library, which is like a commercial extension of the, of the core. Um, you're, not, you're not cool if you haven't got something GPT at the minute. So um, they did recently release this thing called Soda GPT, which is like a generative AI powered um, tool for data quality testing, translating natural language into, into data checks. But the thing that kind of backs all of this is um, Soda CL, which is the Soda check language. So it provides the foundation. So uh, what's Soda CL? Well, it's like a it's a YAML-based like domain-specific language for expressing data checks. So this is an example of how you would express a very simple uh, data check in uh, in Soda. So you've got uh, this is the check here. So it's in checks for uh, a, a data set. This in this case, dim customer, and the check here is row count greater than zero. So it's comprised of a metric, row count, and the threshold. It's the most basic check you could come up with. Um, checks are performed when you run a scan via Soda Core. Uh, a single scan can perform multiple checks against one or more data sets. And kind of each check results in essentially three default states. It passes, so the values in the data set match or fall within thresholds. It fails, so the values in the data set don't match those thresholds, or there's some kind of error. The syntax of the check is invalid. Um, currently at the moment there's about kind of like just shy of 30 pre-built metrics um, and there's three types of checks. First one is the standard check here which we've kind of just looked at. There's a uh, uniqueness checks and we'll see one in a moment and then if there's anything which isn't um, in the pre-built metrics you can uh, use a, uh, create user defined ones based upon which uses CTs or even just SQL queries. So uh, a uniqueness check might look something like this. So this is checking this uh, DIM employee's dev table, and it's saying values in the salary column must exist in the DIM employee prod data set, uh, and checking the salary column there. So a very naturalistic way of expressing the, expressing the checks. 
Um, and this is like a user-defined user check here where we're checking for the customer's table and we've defined a uh, metric called average surface and we're giving it the expression for that. So that's how you can add any sort of uh, check that you really, really want to do. So um, when it comes to running uh, the, the checks, you only really need a couple of things. You need a configuration file I, to, to point you to a data set. In our case, this is a uh, BigQuery. So again, it's just expressed in YAML. A very simple way of expressing the, uh, the, 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 the data source. And you, need a, and you need a checks file here. So in this, uh, in this checks file, we've got uh, a variety of checks for the, our dim customer table. We want to check that the row count is more than zero. So check the table, table has some data. We want to check that we've got um, no invalid email addresses. So we provide it with a valid format of what email is. Um, we want to check there are no null values in the last name column. We want to check there's no duplicate phone numbers. We want to check the data is quite fresh as well, less than seven days old, and no invalid uh, country codes. So we've defined what, half a dozen checks there all on that, all on that one table in uh, uh, just a very few lines of uh, YAML. Um, if we're running it via the uh, CLI, you would just do something like this. So to scan, you provide the, the, the data set and the, and the uh, checks file, and that's the kind of output that you get. In this example here, we've got four checks that have passed, two that have failed, and uh, if we look at the, uh, the, the data that I generated, well, what have we got? So it says that um, it, one email address was not validated correctly, and yeah, it looks like Neil Armstrong has not got a correct email address, and Bono does not have a surname. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's the output of what you would get there from a, if you're just running the checks as a, from a CLI. Um, when it comes to uh, Airflow, um, as I said, there's a the open source Python uh, library as well. At the moment, there isn't like a Soda provider at the moment. Um, they do provide some like example operator code on their or si on their site. Um, but for our purposes, we uh, kind of developed a custom uh, uh, scan operator. Um, and so what starts to happen then is um, running these checks just becomes you know, uh, another task in a, in, in, a, in a DAG. So I'll show the code for the operator in a moment. Um, so we'll just you know, declare it as we would normally, tell it where our checks file is, and you know, it becomes a task in a, in a DAG as, as, like anything else. Um, then we obviously, when, when that runs, we get that, uh, that uh, information um, in, our, uh, in our task log. Um, and that's that's fine, but we want to start making people aware of this. Um, so obviously now we can uh, use the other aspects of Airflow to start um, making uh, this information much more widely known. So if we use like the um, uh, callback functions, we can uh, start pushing that information out to Slack. Um, so we're really starting to um, uh, make visible the, the problems that, were occur that are occurring in our data. But this is perhaps not enough for us as well, because if, this is, if these things are happening in the middle of the night or over, over a weekend, we really want people to um, uh, know about it sooner rather than later so they can intervene and take some action, um, either to solve, uh, fix the problem or even to assess whether this is uh, something we can just continue with. So again, using um, just more of the core of features, we can then start raising this out to things like pager duty. So we're really starting to kind of close the, the amount of time it takes from us uh, discovering a problem within our pipelines to notifying people that uh, something has happened, telling them exactly what, it, what, what the problem is um, so that they can then take some action fix it or, or just resume the pipelines so that we can get that data uh, complete and our users um, uh, can then start making those decisions again. So yes, the uh, a bit on the kind of soda scan operator that is a little bit custom to us. So um, uh, we uh, Import the, import the library, uh, instantiate it. If we wanted to um, get more of a verbose output, like the actual SQL that was run for each check, we could enable, enable that. 
Um, we'll add some add the, add, add the data source, add some the configuration file that we saw. We can add variables if we need to. If we want to be more programmatic in, in the in the checks that we want to run, um, then this is where we add the um, the checks. Then it kind of gets executed. Um, the first thing here is where we kind of we assert that there are no error logs. This just checks the no SQL errors when the, when the checks actually run. Um, and the next bit is where we want to, there's an option to it to say whether we actually want this task to fail or not when a check fails. Um, so a certain no checks fail will say, raise an exception, cause the airflow task to fail, which then is obviously going to stop anything, anything that's downstream of that, that uh, running. And that's what we saw in, the, in that first example. However, there might be examples whereby you don't want that to happen. You might want to still perform these checks, know about things that have happened, but not actually be like a critical stop in your in your in your pipeline, and so um, if we uh, uh, check this, um, if we mark this scan has check or check warns or fails, this will just check whether there are any warnings or failures in the in the check results, uh, and if true, it will return the output like to a next common value, um, and then. Again, using like callback functions as well, we can just you know, send out another another Slack message just to say, okay, well, we complete these checks. There were errors, warnings, um, but uh, the actual airflow task succeeded and uh, carried on. So this gives us our you know, non-critical checks. Um, other types of uh, SODA capabilities that exist. So you can uh, do schema checks as well. So maybe you want to, as it says there, validate like, the presence, absence, you know, or the type of columns and you know, employ configuration to special, specify certain fail conditions. So in, in this check here, we want to confirm that required columns are present. So only fail this when this required column uh, is missing. Um, a cross check is another type of check we can run, essentially comparing row counts between, between tables. Um, yeah, so just this, in this example here, we're just comparing the row count in our uh, FS Summit DIM customer is the one in our DIM customer test, test table. Um, other other um, types of checks you can do are kind of more anomaly score. So this is where we're running, or Soda runs kind of like a machine learning algorithm that tries to detect uh, anomalies based on like learned patterns. Um, Again, it's a very simple, <laughs> a very simple check to uh, define. Um, you can use uh, numeric missing or validity metrics in here as well, um, and change over time thresholds as well. So comparing metrics relative to a yeah, previously measured value. So what do we got here? Like checks for row counts between row, change of row count between minus twenty and plus fifty, same day last week, percentages that that's that sort of thing. Um, these types of checks do require the kind of the, the soda cloud component, though, unfortunately. All right. Um, so, just to summarize this, uh, summarize this all a little bit. Um, if you're not doing anything in this area, I think you really should. Um, what I found is that soda cloud provides like a, a really easy to configure data source agnostic and very kind of human readable way of defining uh, defining data checks. Integrating kind of soda into Airflow kind of like really enables data engineers to perform tests at really any point in the in the pipeline. And you know, with all of the extra capabilities that um, uh, Airflow, Airflow brings, then we can start to use those to really kind of acceler accelerate the discovery time of problems. And yeah, help reduce that what we call like that data downtime, where the, the data consumers don't have that that, that latest information. Um, just a couple of counterpoints, however. Um, some of these more advanced kind of like soda cable you've seen are kind of behind some behind some of these um, commercial uh, products. Uh, that's fair enough, perhaps. You know, writing checks does require an element of like domain knowledge and kind of knowing what to check for. Um, and you know, data quality testing is really just part of like a much more multi-layered data observability strategy, which you know would cover um, things such as like this. All of which are topics that are way beyond the scope of uh, this talk. Um, so with that, thanks very much for listening.
Hey, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, my question has to do with how King handles these data quality checks at scale. So I imagine, you know, you're dealing with a lot of data, just roughly like, you know, check it every day, every hour, how much data. Um, I've used great expectations, but not the tool itself. So I'm just wondering, do you have any strategies or tips on that? Um, well, I mean, the, 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 the checks run just as part of like, uh, yeah, it's sort of like a, a DAG, right? So it, it runs on the frequency of what our DAG pipelines are running. Uh, typically, most most of the pipelines that we run are um, uh, daily, primar primarily. So um, you know, we're, we're we're checking it on that on on that sort of um, that sort of frequency generally. Um, but as I said, it's based upon the um, the output of the pipelines, like post ingestion or kind of like post 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 transformation. So the scale really depends upon <laughs> the, the, the size of, I guess, the uh, the object that you're that you're, you're building, really. So if it's yes, we have all this data, but quite often it gets condensed down and aggregated down into something that's a bit more manageable, and it's that that we're kind of like just testing on, really. Uh, hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, can you share some experience on uh, dealing with flaky uh, data quality checks? Because sometimes you do uh, come to the situation that your table is slightly wrong, not entirely wrong, and sometimes your your quality track is based on some initial estimation, and that may be not uh, entirely accurate. So uh, yeah. that comes to quite some uh, flaky uh, tracks in our situation. And uh, just wondering, do you have any experience to share? Um, well, I suppose that's kind of where the kind of um, the non-critical kind of checks come into play. I suppose um, so. Um, having that capability to at least surface that knowledge of where there's where the, where there are problems, but without them being blockers. Certainly, you know, we introduce kind of checks later on down the line, and if we put in all of the types of checks now that we would maybe like to, we'd have failures kind of uh, all, 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 all all over the place. Um, so um, yeah, I think you have to kind of make make decisions really about what it is that you really want to cause um, you know, your pipelines or your processes to actually stop and start um, telling people about versus the ones that you are happy to kind of let go and maybe kind of want to pick up a, pick up a, a later date, I think. Um, uh, hello, could hi. we could go back to slides, uh, oh. to this definition of checks? Uh, uh, oh yeah, here. Uh, so are those yes. really uh, definitions of those checks, or yeah. is it description, or is it? That's it. That's that's the, that's the. Check. Okay, it's not like some language that looks like English, but is actually pretty well defined. It's just. Yeah, that's yeah. This, that's literally how you would describe a check, and that's and that's and that's what you run. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. And one question: It looks like it. Uh, so just looking for confirmation. When I was using DBT test before, uh, the big problem was that the checks were basically binary, and you didn't know what the actual values of some data was. So it worked SQL. If it like returned some values, it failed. So here you kind of get the actual metric value. Something is greater than 10, so we get the wrong count. And you can see that yeah. it was a million and should be zero, yeah. right? And yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. And also there's certain types of checks as well actually will result, uh, can return sample data as well. So um, like the, the things like some of the um, like duplicate checks and things like that, it will actually return return the, uh, the sample data of what caused that failure to happen as well. Thanks. Okay. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you talked about anomaly detection using Soda Cloud. Um, for that, did you ever look into the Soda scientific package and their like checks like distribution references uh, for anomaly detections? I've not, yeah, not yet, no. Um, we're only really kind of using the kind of Soda core at the minute, so just the, just the, just the free bit and haven't really kind of dove, dove, gone into the just the solar cloud commercial side of it just yet, but um, yeah, we might might do that. Uh, in your experience, do you have a preference as to including the soda checks within the DAG or just generally? Because I think I know like another team they can run soda checks uh, periodically through like the UI. Whether to it's better to include that in the DAG or or not? I think I think uh, both. <laughs> Six to one half doesn't know another in your experience. Yeah, okay. yeah, I, yeah. I mean, like. Um, yeah, uh, I, I think they can complement each other. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.